What's up, everybody? We're back. And oh, nice. You finally find the beans you were looking for. Oh, yeah. Uh, how many how many cans of that have you had? This is can number 44, I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking sick of these things. <laughs> Are you sure? Mm. So good, though. <laughs> I'm all beamed up. Yeah. I beamed up. Yep. <laughs> and I'm ready to be back on the podcast. Yeah, seems like it. Yeah, well, you know, Cody and I. You well, know, by the way, I watched Stuart Little. Oh, did you finally? No, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> why, am I, why am I eating these with a fucking spoon? Yeah, you. Yeah. Just get your little mousy <laughs> little teeth in there. Just. Oh, no water. <laughs> oh, it's just going to be bean breath for the rest of the episode. Look, uh, c- before Cody came up on the ship, you know, we talked and, you know, Cody figured that, uh, you know, if he can't be as, you know, maybe. Uh, think the same way as Meat Canyon. He can be at least as possibly as big as. as I'm just trying to grow, yeah, and meet that man's physical stature because yeah. seeing him yeah, in my seat, <laughs> I was like, I, that seat's way smaller than I remember. He was like a cat. He was like this. I know. I was like, yeah, he's <laughs> he's c- commanding that seat. I like. <laughs> I fucking like sink into the, like I sit down and I my ass falls in the crack in the back and I, and I do it like you know, hi welcome to the podcast. I, I you know it's like quicksand in this bitch. Yeah, so, and he like sat and it was like, yeah high up. Yeah, and he was he was pushed together. Yeah, well, so I guess your new name would be Bean Canyon. <laughs> It's another name for the vagina, Bean Canyon. (laughs) (laughs) And we're back. And we're back. Helmet off? Bruh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. (laughs) Sorry. That's a good way to start the episode, yeah. (laughs) What's up, guys? This is the TMG Podcast. This is today's free episode. If you want this episode ad-free and an extra bonus episode, you can find out right now on Patreon.com slash tinyk. And if not, then enjoy the tour. Holy fuck, Jamie! Can we get a clip of that DRM? Can you hit by that car? Let's live the flying stalkers may soon be solved. If you've never smoked weed at literal Woodstock, you're not a stoner. Goodbye. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Ah, oh, gay as fuck. I'm trying to get my honor season. The so-called flying stuff. Look at all these fucking chickens. Malone Brown, did you hear this whole? No. Malone Brown dick in your mouth? <laughs> no! 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 Please look at all the signs. Fashion your seatbelt and get ready for the base. We got big news. Real big news. And it comes down to one word. Wednesday. 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 We're moving the episode release day for TMG up to Wednesdays, and that's a good thing. It's a good thing, baby. Wednesday. We are still recording on Tuesdays, but the episode will be just hurried up and turned around quicker. On Patreon, I can't read the fucking line, it's way too long. Just know that it's coming out on fucking Wednesdays. That means more topical jokes for you, Wednesday. Being in tune with the news by coming out on Wednesday. Current news and headlines, Wednesday. We'll be live every Wednesday from the Intergalactic Superdome here at the TMG Spaceship. It's coming, it's happening every Wednesday. Podcast, podcast, podcast. Oh, it's going to be a hell of a Hellraiser every Wednesday here at the Intergalactic Superdome. It's coming out on Wednesdays. It's a podcast, by the way. And tell them why, Noel. Tell them why. Because we're making a new addition to the show. To the studio. It's the Brooke and Connor podcast called Brooke and Connor Make a Podcast. Brooke and Connor Make a Podcast. Brand new show. It's a podcast. And the first episode comes out January 27th this Thursday. Which is Thursday. Thursday. Keep that in your fucking head. Thursday. But don't remember, it's getting steaming fucking hot on Wednesdays here at the TMG Show. Tune in every Wednesday, because this show is now live on Wednesdays. And that'll be TMG on Wednesdays, by the way, and Brooke and Connor on Thursdays, just in case you didn't get that. So, wanted to reiterate. 
it's a podcast. This is gonna be a bone crushing, Medicaid juicing, body wearing out son of a bitch, son of a bit. <laughs> I think that's a good way to end it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, now let's start the show. <laughs> and we're here. We're back, def- man. Uh, we're definitely I here. Just, uh, not at the end of the day. We are not. We are fresh, and we have not recorded. We've just got on. We the just ship. got on here, and it feels good. It feels good to be back. Yeah. Thanks for having me back. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah. So happy you guys want me back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, yeah. No, uh, thanks. You know. I was, you know, I was away. I was out of town. Um, I was in Cabo. And I uh, watched the episode, most of it, yeah. with Hunter. Yeah. And it's just, it was it was really funny. Yeah, he's a funny guy. I hate to say it. It was really funny. Yeah, yeah, he's a funny dude. And I saw your fucking comments, all right? I saw them. He's a better Cody than ever. Fucking... So now the pressure's on, man. I gotta be like no, that's extra. Fine. They can just listen to the bonus. Everyone who's, tap- Everyone who's gonna listen to the bonus today... Will remember who who we are. <laughs> okay, how we joke about pee, <laughs> how we joke about farts, everything, beans, all of that, poo, all microwaving. Of that. Po- no, I'm no, not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. No, no. no. It, it, we also had some, you know, we had some economic commentary in the bonus, mm-hmm. which we haven't shot yet. Yeah. So yeah. they'll they'll be reassured. Yes. There's no worries there. Good. Um, you know, I would say. <laughs> Equally as as fun to bring up is I called out Ryan's toys at the UFC this uh, week. I saw that. Yeah, I, I I was so stoked on it that I made a little video dedicated to it. Um, Wait, so let's let's let's, 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 let's rewind a little bit here. How did you get invited to the UFC? What happened? Uh, this dude there, shout out to Gavin. He actually DM'd me like five years ago from the UFC account. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and we talked for a bit, and then you know just shit happens, and then. He like followed up with me a couple weeks ago. He's like, "Yo, man, are are you uh, in town? We're coming to Anaheim." I was like, "Yeah, I'm definitely in town." He's like, "Come on out." Oh, that's where the fight was, Anaheim. It was in Anaheim. Oh, cool. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, he just, you know, we just got on a Zoom call. He's like, "Yep, yeah, here are your tickets." I was like, "Sick." Just got there, and I was I was ringside. Um, that's tight. Yeah. How was it? What's it like seeing an actual fight from there? Um, from that distance, I mean. I said this in my video today, but like I see why Joe is always talking about their bodies. <laughs> it's like it's you can't it's deny. So sweaty and I mean, literally, I mean, like literally, so many muscles. There's literally no other way you can describe it. I mean, dude, Francis Ngannou is gigantic in front of you. I was eye line with Joe. Okay, Joe was getting really? in the octagon. I was like, I see you, man. Like, uh, did you go? Yes. <laughs> He, Were you scared? He wouldn't have seen me. He was, <laughs> I was definitely in the dark. Um, no, it was it was crazy. I mean, just you know, I definitely appreciate what is going on, in, you know, in a fight. But uh, like I was, you know, I think the biggest thing is especially heavyweights. That ring every time they move, like the mats would just <clears> thud, <throat> and you just get all those extra little nuanced things where you're like, oh shit, it makes it way intense. So. I'm it surprised was, I didn't see you on the TV. I feel like I always, it's funny, like UFC fights, you always see the most like random person. Not that you're random, but I'm saying like someone oh, you yeah, never no, expect. Cool. Yeah. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. I'm just saying like, it, it's like just because of the, the camera, the way the camera is on the fighters where you see like the people the, behind them. Yeah. Like the yeah. first like 10 rows. Yeah. And that's always like the celebrity row. Yeah. So it's always like you're watching a fight and you're like, is that Clay Aiken? Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, like, is that Apollo Ono? <laughs> Why the fuck is he? Who does he know? The fuck. Yeah. Yeah. It's all. Yeah. It'd always be like a weird ensemble of people. Oh yeah. Always. It'd be like a women's basketball pro, and then like a f- bantamweight fighter. Yeah. And then like maybe you know fucking um, <laughs> jo- Joel Orstein. <laughs> like that guy watches MMA. I was. I, um, what happened? I think I was row eight, but like the side I was on. So they have like the super famous section. Right. I wasn't there. Okay. Okay. I was just like, you know, ringside. Um, like Justin Bieber, is that whoever was okay. over there? I think right. Mike Tyson was over there. Damn. Okay. I ran into a couple of people. I ran into this comedian, uh, Rocky Dale Davis. Um, that, that man in some ways stole the show. He was, uh, he listens to the podcast. Shout out to you, Rocky. He was hilarious. He was, drunk and just screaming there's this guy that kept standing up in front of us and you know 
this is this is a little bit of a friendly fire here, but he was a shorter man. Okay. And when he was stand up, bless his heart, man, he was just trying to get, he was just trying to see. Okay. He was trying to see what's going on in the <laughs> okay. fight. He was stand up, and unfortunately, we're all sitting down, and he's blocking our view. So Rocky, being the big motherfucker that he is, wasted no time and just saying, Hey, you short motherfucker, sit down! <laughs> and at first, everyone around Damn. us was, was like, Ooh. But then as the night kept going and this dude kept standing up <laughs> and like covering key moments, then it turned into, there was like this, these, row, these row of dudes behind us, they owned like a, a, a jujitsu gym. They started getting frustrated with the guys standing up. So then Rocky would get at it and then one of their guys would be like, shut the fuck down! <laughs> and then it just became more people behind to the point where this dude, he would like think about it. Th three or four voices would be like, don't, fucking don't. <laughs> Don't <laughs> like he'd go to stand up and then yeah, literally just all right. No, I wasn't gonna. I yeah. wasn't gonna stand up anyways. And then he would turn to his friend. He'd be like, "Are they fucked, dude? This is fucking pissing me <laughs> off." And I then, just want to stand. But you know, Rocky just. Had but he to, was a short fella. He was a short fella. Ah, oh. Rocky made. Well, then sure I feel for him. I do as well. But I was also like, sit the fuck down. I was, you know, yeah. And and Rocky made sure that that dude knew he was small that night. <laughs> oh no! Which you know, <laughs> oh fuck! You could say it's mean, but the repeat. I mean, by the time you stand up on your ninth or tenth time, it was getting fucking rude. Right, right. Because everyone, it was just like this unspoken thing, where everyone understands. Yeah, we're ringside, but we're all just gonna honor that we can't see. Er, er, literally, the rows are doing that TikTok shit. Oh, so like, they're all on the ground. Yeah, there's no like out like no. We're okay. all on one level, so everyone has politely agreed that if you're in row one, you're gonna stay straight. Row two, you're gonna all lean to the left. Row three, you're all gonna lean to the right, mm. and we're just gonna. Gotcha. So everyone can see what's going on. So if one person stands, it fucks the whole thing up. Uh, I mean, he stood up as like people were getting knocked out. Okay. And everyone was like, oh, shut the fuck. <laughs> it was so frustrating. So it was mean, but it wasn't that mean. Hey, guys, we want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, DoorDash. You want Chinese, they want pizza, and someone is craving for Oyo. There's something for everyone on DoorDash. DoorDash connects you with the restaurants you love right now and right to your door. Did you want to do my part? Oh, actually, yes. Go ahead. And now you can get grocery essentials you need with DoorDash, too. <laughs> That's your voice. <laughs> Keep going. Yo, get drinks, snacks. <laughs> and now you can get grocery essentials you need with DoorDash, too. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items delivered in under an hour. Ordering is easy. Just open the DoorDash app, choose what you want from where you want, and your items will be safely left outside your door with the contactless delivery drop-off setting. With over 300,000 partners in the U.S., Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia, <laughs> you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeye's, Chipotle, and Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees. What's it? Let's go! On their first order of 15 bucks or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code TINY. That's my impression of me. That's 25% off up to a $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the code TINY. Don't forget, that's code TINY with 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. Yo! <laughs> And as a small person standing next to Rocky, um, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna lie. I, I switched sides. You know, I didn't tell I'm him to sit he. down. Rocky? Yeah. I don't know, six ten. Or oh, okay. Something. <laughs> okay. He's huge. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, he shook my hand, and I felt my hand crumbling in his <laughs> like hand. Like me, like me sitting in this chair. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Um. And you know, I'm. I'm. He. I understood part of his frustration as well because the UFC brought him out to do stand up at the weigh ins which you do know stand up I don't want to take away from his story cuz it is his story but damn he sent me a clip and it, my soul would have been left in pieces cuz he bombed yeah, I mean yeah like he was like they weren't expecting stand up it's like <laughs> 4 in the afternoon they're expecting dudes to stand on a scale that's it bro and I'm, I was like, all the lights were on, huh? He's like, yep. Oh, Jesus And I was Christ. like, did they leave the scale up there for you to walk around it as you did material? He's like, 
and then he showed me in the live stream of it, they didn't mic the crowd. So every time he told a joke, it sounded like pure silence. So the clip he sent me is like, you know, like his Jesus. closing joke. It's like his big punchline. He says it and he's like, fuck y'all, man. I thought I would have had y'all. Oh, and then damn. he's like, I'm out of here. I'm, you know, I'm Rocky Dale Davis. And he leaves. And, damn. Um, so yeah, it, he, he had a hell of a night. So unfortunately, the short man had to take the brunt of it. That's fair. Um, I get it now. I'm on y'all's side now. <laughs> I, ha I have a little, I have a little celebrity story as well. Yeah, I mean, I also got his, you know, I ran into Andrew Schultz and we chopped it up for a oh, while. Oh, nice. So. I think I saw him in Venice. Yeah, probably. Really briefly. Yeah. He was getting out of an Uber or something like that. And I was like, oh, I think that's him. Tall son of a bitch, that guy. So he was there too? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, he is tall. He's really fucking tall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I did see him. Um, I, uh, what was it? Your tweet? Oh, it was Why? just like my, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's watch this for a sec. To be here. You having fun tonight so far? Oh yeah, most definitely. Yeah, um, I had a chat with Dana earlier. He said that I could fight any eight-year-old I want. Uh, in the really? Octagon. Yeah. We're so. setting this up. Yeah. Have you picked out an eight-year-old to fight? Uh, I'm thinking any like rich toy reviewer on YouTube. <laughs> that way, I can get the biggest payout <laughs> possible. I know who you're maybe. Who? Well, I mean, my son's a. I'm not gonna say any names. You have to say it. Brian's toys. Watch it back. <laughs> 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 that was a joke. I'm bringing all 100 years of pain that I felt. She was like, all right, wrap it up, door. wrap it up, wrap it up. It's also funny because I think Ryan's toys is like he's 10. 16 now. He's 10. Yeah. Okay, I was like, it's been he's been eight forever. Yeah, whatever, man. That kid's been reviewing toys forever, Long and they just keep time. pretending he's the same age. He's like, Dad, I don't even like these fucking things anymore. Can you imagine when he just review it? When he's 16, chain smoking. Yeah. <sighs> this is the Lego Millennium Falcon. <laughs> Just <laughs> I don't know, Dad. What's the line? Ripping his jewel. Yeah. <sighs> um. Yeah. So you're you had a celebrity encounter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I had an encounter. Oh wait. Damn it. I don't know if I can leak this. <clears throat> but I'm gonna. So I'm not gonna name names, but someone from the UFC's team told me that Dana White saw us. Roasting fucking Friday. No way. And apparently, that's the hardest they've seen him laugh in a long time. No way. Specifically, when I got him with that, tastes like eating a Care Bear's pussy. <laughs> apparently, he was weeping. No way. Yeah. So, so can we like? I don't know, Dana. Dana's team. If you're watching this, put us on, <laughs> dude. We, we want to eat some Care Bear yes, pussy with do. the man himself. Yes, we do. We so, have to do something with him. Yeah, so you know. Okay, so yeah, this is what I'm, this is what I'm talking about. This is a star-studded episode. We got Rocky. We got Dana White. We <laughs> yeah. got Gary V coming on later, by the way. We haven't said that yet, but he's literally coming on this episode later. He said he'd do it, and he's coming yeah. on. And uh, now I got this story. Okay, so you know the the quarterback for the – and I'm going to name names because I'm, I'm going to just fucking – I was embarrassed as fuck for a little bit, but I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to come on and say it, all right? Okay. The quarterback for the Detroit Lions, Jared Goff, used okay. to be the quarterback for the Rams, Rams, right? Yeah. Okay. I saw him in, in Cabo, right? He was at this place that I was at, mm -hmm. and uh, it was like a kind of like a spa type situation. Was he on a jet ski as well? <clears throat> he was not on a jet ski. Uh, yeah. What was it? Yo. 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 <laughs> uh, it was like a spa situation. It was like a cold plunge and like a hot tub and we were all chilling around that area and then there was like this little like lounge area where you can get a drink or whatever and my friend comes out and he's like, yo, what the, f Jared Goff's in there. What the fuck? And uh, I knew his name because of the, because he played for the Rams, right? And so, but I'm like not that much of a football fan so all my friends were kind of freaking out and uh, I was just like, that's cool. That's really cool. But I don't really know what he looks like but I sort of do and I walked in and he, he's like, yo, and puts out his hand and shakes my hand. I'm walking with my buddy and he's like, what the fuck? How do you know? And I'm like, I don't. And he's like, yo, we, we met at the, uh, the softball game. Right. And I was like, yup. <laughs> I just fucking lied. I lied right to his face. I said, yes. I didn't know what else to do. I said, yeah, yup. Good to see you, bro. And I just kept it going. And he was like, he was like, yeah, man, that was crazy. It's been, it's, how you been? And I was like, ah, oh, you know, Still 
playing softball, just doing my thing, you know. <laughs> I didn't say that, but I was like, man, I'm just chilling. I'm doing good. How are you doing? He's like, yeah, you know, just enjoying some time off. And I was like, I get it, you know. Yeah. Not really, because you're an NFL quarterback, but I get you, you know. And we're like, and so, and then his buddy was sitting at the table, and his buddy goes, or he goes, yo, uh, by the way, this is Cody. And I'm like, so so you do? What the fuck? And, he sh- and, and the, I shake the guy's hand. He's like, yeah, I met him at the like so-and-so charity softball game. And the guy was like, oh, word, I, I didn't, like, I was there too or something. We didn't, and I was like, yeah, crazy day, <laughs> you know, that softball game. We, we raised so much money. We really did it. And, uh, and so I fucking walked away, and my buddy was like, how do you know Jared Goff? And I was like, dude, I don't. <laughs> so, Jared, if you're watching, I want to apologize for lying right to your face. I never played in any <laughs> softball game ever. I've never played softball in how my does life. I know your name. Didn't didn't like you? Didn't you play with him on stream or something one time? No, I, no, I, I, I could have sworn it was like I played because with, of that. I played with a Raider and I played with Brett Phillips, the the pitcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or the baseball guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's what I was thinking about. I was like, maybe it was from that. But it wasn't. I mean, maybe he just like saw, recognized me from YouTube or something like that and just like <laughs> tried to figure out where he knew me from but didn't figure it out. So I'm sorry. That's my bad. I, I should have said no. What if, but I wanted to seem cool in front of my friend, honestly. So I was just like, yeah, dude. What if as you were walking up, he like leaned over to his buddies like, watch this. Yeah. <laughs> and my girlfriend like watches this guy's hmm, YouTube videos or that's something. That's cool, man. Cause we never played in a softball game. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I know. I was just, we were busting each other's balls, we right? Right? <laughs> That's what you I was thinking. It's like the softball game, right? Where you sucked my dick. <laughs> huh? I would have said, yeah. Yeah. I would have said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I sucked on it. <laughs> <laughs> nice, yeah, nice dick, by the way. <laughs> Oh man, he's I like, was just really embarrassed, you know. <laughs> this is the game. Oh my god, how shitty is it to lie about playing for a fucking charity game? That's, That's so shitty. Yeah, does this ring a bell? All the kids with fucking terminal illnesses that you helped out, dude. Nice, nice. Yeah, all those kids that you lend your platform to to raise money for. Good thing Jared Goff remembers that great memory you guys shared together. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I've never felt worse. You're you're gonna go to heaven. Life. When you die, you're gonna go to heaven, and fucking and God's the dude gonna up be there, like, he's gonna be God's like, gonna be like, yo, Cody, right? You were at the celebrity From softball the game. <laughs> softball game. Like, I'm be, like, yeah. <laughs> he's gonna be like, nope, and just hit a switch. <laughs> Hell, bitch. <laughs> Wait, no. <laughs> then you're just down there with Ronald Reagan. <laughs> 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 oh dude Jared I'm sorry man please God you know damn, hit me up bro. hit me up yeah, I won't just, lie this time just hit him up man Jared I just want to let you know I, I'd never lie to you man I tell <laughs> fuck you I lie, I tell it right to your face <laughs> hey softball game I'd be like nah <laughs> <laughs> you imagine yo from the softball game nope <laughs> just uh, okay. Yeah, I never played there. Yeah. <laughs> never did that. So I don't know what your dumb ass is thinking about. <laughs> Maybe it says CTE this. Oh no. Stop. Stop. <laughs> How can I say, man? It's my job, you know? Knock on wood. Hope it doesn't happen to him. Um Jared, despite <laughs> the thing he just said, <laughs> Jared, you should come on the show if you're watching this. I wanna I wanna talk to you about this moment. About the the time that I lied, and, and we'll hash it out, you know. And uh, if you heard what Noel just said, you you wouldn't come on the show. That's not true. <laughs> I'm kidding. You wouldn't remember. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm. Sorry. It's too easy. It's too easy. <laughs> now I'm never gonna be actually friends with this dude. Oh my god, dude! <laughs> oh fuck, man, Jared. That's so if funny. you happen to come across this, man, you know it's all jokes, dude. And uh, come welcome. on the show. I need. To, I really need to like 
tell this to you face to yeah, face. Yeah, please. And I lied to you because I feel really bad about it. Yeah, please. And, yeah, please beam up to the ship here so Cody can make amends and yeah, make make peace with the sin that he's committed. <laughs> he's gonna come on the show and be like, "Who are you?" Oh, we don't you remember the pool that? No, he's like, "Oh like, yeah, you were oh, that no. fucking guy who lied to my face." <laughs> Or I'll be like, I don't remember that. <laughs> like, oh, okay, bye. <laughs> bye. Hey, guys, we want to take another quick break to thank another sponsor of today's episode, Honey. We all shop online, and we've all seen that promo code field taunt us at the checkout. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free browser extension that scours the internet for <laughs> promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. <gasps> Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. They range from sites that have tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. Holy sh... One breath. <laughs> That's incredible. Thanks, dude. That's amazing. Why don't you tell them some money you saved with Honey? Oh, my God. I mean, <clears throat> I really... It makes me breathless to think about the money that it saved me. Uh, I went to Cabo recently <laughs> and had to get a bunch of stuff for the beach. You know, toys and stuff. Yeah. Shovels and to play you know, with. Yeah, making sandcastles <laughs> yeah, and stuff like that. <laughs> Honey was perfect and saved me a bunch of money so I can enjoy my trip. <clears throat> <clears throat> Honey has actually found it's over 17 million members, over two billion dollars in savings wow so if you don't already have honey you could be straight up missing out on free savings it's literally free and installs in a few seconds <laughs> oh my god and by getting it you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast like, so freak out about it or whatever get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash tmg that's joinhoney.com slash tmg <laughs> all right guys listen we got gary v coming on right now strap in <clears throat> Um, we do and enjoy. Oh, and wait, real quick, what? everyone. Um, we got to do a quick thank you for the newsletter. Um, it's at a hundred thousand subscribers. Yeah, you, you you did it, which is insane. Um, we got you a lot. Did of, it. You guys did it. The TMG army did it. <clears throat> we got we got some <laughs> army. <laughs> we got some replies from you guys letting you know that it went to your spam folder. Um, so uh, you have to like I guess move us from your spam folder by adding us to your contacts, I guess. Yeah, and another thing you could do, if you wouldn't mind, if you have time, is reply to the email. Oh, yeah, because we're going to do a Q&A, uh, and we're going to just, I don't know, if you guys have questions about stuff, we just want to make that part of the newsletter. So so reply to the email with your questions, and uh, or whatever you want, comments, like on the <clears throat> podcast, whatever. You can post them on, you know, the whatever, YouTube, but... Reply to the email. We read yeah, those. Yeah, if you reply so, to the email, yeah. uh, it's uh, actually a nice way to collect everything. But, um, you know, all, all jokes aside about Jared Goff, uh, we do have a, a real star, you know, real star shining bright on this intergalactic show. All right, let me fucking leave it alone. Dude, look, we got Gary V coming on. Um, this is insane. Yeah. Because given all the jokes we've made about him, you would think <coughs> he would never... <clears throat> You know, it would just be a, a simple fuck these guys. Yeah, I, I would think so as well. So I, I was surprised that he agreed to this in, in the first place. And mm -hmm. I'm really kind of nervous about what the, I don't know, tonally what it's going to be. So yeah, I guess we'll find out. We will definitely find out. The man. Yes. Boys. There he is. He's here. That's good. The one and only. How are you, man? I'm quite well. How are you two guys? We're good, man. We, we see all the appearances you do, man. Everyone's always asking you to explain things and give advice on things, but no one ever asks you, man, how are you doing? Yeah, that's very nice of you. I appreciate that. I am doing really well, man. When you keep shit super simple, it kind of works itself out, you know? What, yeah. what does that mean? Like what? I think like, I don't give a fuck about most shit. Mm -hmm. You know, like as long as my fucking family's healthy, like the business stuff is like, I love doing it. I'm so lucky that it's like my natural, you know, I always think of like skiers or painters or like, I, I genuinely believe like if you're truly an entrepreneur, like I'm old, you guys are youngsters. I'm 46. When I was coming up, entrepreneurship wasn't even a fucking word. I never even heard it. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to sell lemonade and sell baseball cards and go to garage, you know, like it was what I liked. It was my craft. It was like my art. So the fact that I like am good at the thing that I naturally like doing the most is such a fucking, you know, you're just, that's like, 
luck of the fucking DNA game, you know? Yeah. Well, you say we're youngsters, but you're 46. Cody, you're 50. Ah, <laughs> got it. <laughs> I'm a sprightly 31, actually. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's Appreciate crazy, man. That. And, great, and great fucking hair. Wow. Oh, let's go. Really? Wow. Okay, can I... I... Think, who would debate that? <laughs> I will. He who would. He fucking it? would. You know who? He would? he would. Yes, he would. I'll debate that's just anything. because he's that's that's called brotherly love when you're just such boys, no yeah. matter how much good shit is happening. Yeah. You're still gonna like my friends, my inner circle, I there's nothing I can do that they're not gonna make fun. It's actually why I love the shit, like <laughs> like one of the reasons I couldn't wait to like do this with you guys is like I'm so ridiculous as a communicator. Like I think I'm the greatest fodder for like laughs. And so me and my boys are that way. That's how he is. Like anybody that wasn't close to you would all agree that your hair is the best, but your boy can be like, your hair sucks shit. Yeah, your <laughs> and hair that's, sucks shit. And the problem is that's the only person you believe is that right. guy. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, fuck man, I am. It does there's, suck. There's it's receding a little bit. <laughs> God damn it. You know what's funny? And I think you guys know this in the context, I think of what you guys do so well. There's something so special about like that inner circle that like the love, the raz, the zinging and the hug, like it's all just one same macro, like, like all love, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. A lot of people misconstrue my, my brutality for hate, but it's love, you know, <laughs> when I, I actually genuinely understand that. Hell yeah. Well, I actually, really do. can I, okay, here, this actually is a good segue into my next question. Cause Please. we, so we DM'd on October 11th when I asked you to do this. Damn, are we and on then, court? And then <laughs> on October 11th, yeah. <laughs> I sent you a DM. No, but then, <laughs> and then, so we arranged this and we said, okay, let's make it happen. Hit me on the email, whatever. And then October 15th, you sent me a video of yourself. It was a TikTok that you did saying that uh, it was basically saying like you lose out on opportunities by making fun of them or being negative. And then you said had to do it. And I just want to know, do you, do you hate me? Oh, I, oh, I'm sorry. I sent that to like 25 people that I had just talked to on DM. I meant had to do it to society. That wasn't just to you. Oh, what I, I, do is, <laughs> I thought what it was, I, I thought is, it was ultra no. targeted at me <laughs> because you had seen like, no. uh, you know, something that we did and you were like, you know what? The he mental, actually needs to know this. Did, this is a, the, the, yes, that's the, the one the stuff, the stuff like that, or like, like, there are so many people that are so, sorry, what just happened? There are so many people that are, like I, I actually think the way I do keynotes is so affected by stand-up comedy and Randy the Macho Man Savage, <laughs> right? Like mm. when I, like, as I, like I was doing it, I was doing it and then finally I was like, why is that how I do it? And I was like, oh fuck, I used to listen to stand-up 24 seven, you know, jerky boys, fucking, you know, Eddie Murphy raw. And I watched wrestling promo videos like it was my job. And I'm like, oh shit, subconsciously, this is like how I do shit. And I think for me, like when, now that I'm known enough that people do shit about me, A, I'm humbled. <laughs> I'm like, this is fucking crazy. Like, I'm like, this is crazy that I'm subject matter for talented people and two, if you fucking take yourself so fucking serious that you don't see when people that actually have talent are doing shit with it, that you are so insecure that you get mad or upset, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> like for me, the, the stuff, you know, cause you guys do so well, the stuff that I've seen, first of all, I, it's very easy for me to see who is talented and being creative versus does somebody have malicious intent and wants to hurt somebody. It's just, I don't know, for me, it comes very natural. I'm not even talking about me. I'm just like talking like when you watch shit, mm, I'm like, yeah. that's creativity and pop culture. Oh, this person's hurting inside and just wants to tear this other person. Uh, like, it's yeah. so crystal clear. Yep. Yeah. So for me, no, I mean, I think you guys are, genuinely talented and i'm oh, like thank you, man. flattered for any time i'm in your fucking mouths damn that means a lot honestly damn. so you've seen demented gary v then 
Yes. Okay, good. I, I, we wanted to ask I, you what you thought I, of I that. Someti- I sometimes want to be demented, Gary. Yes. Lee, but I'm very, <laughs> my mom did too good of a job in making me nice, but I've seen it. And, and really, and you know this, like you guys watched it. I, I feel, I'm making assumptions, that you guys are as good as you are because you're watching everything in culture. I think that... I have a fucking funny communication style that out of context, I think it's real funny, well, real fast. Wait, wait. I think I think that, yeah, like like saying <laughs> stuff like I want to rip my arms off and or what did you say in that? Oh, you said yeah. like kill your family or something? Yeah, no, 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 in the no, original TikTok. Before we go down this road, okay, Gary, okay. can you just can you just make my year and say picture swallowing a bag of nails? Can you just say that line? A mayonnaise? Of, of nails. nails. Like Nails, yes, got it. I'm sorry, I was like, mayonnaise, what did I miss? <laughs> I need you to picture yourself <laughs> swallowing a bag of nails. <laughs> oh, you're a legend. You're a fucking legend for that. <laughs> Holy you shit. Know, what's really funny about all that stuff, like I'll rip my arm off to be 25 <laughs> or like, you know, how do I not worry about dumb shit? Well, imagine picturing your family get, you know, Th- those are like me trying to like shake somebody totally, who's yeah. like upset yeah. about like totally. they got to be on the report card or their friend got a totally, Porsche man. and they don't yeah. have one. And yeah. I'm like, bro, like think about this shit on the flip side. And this is where TikTok as a format fucked me. I was like, oh shit, people can <laughs> stitch shit, edit it the way they want to. Like, you know. I mean, yeah, now you have shit. people armless bleeding out on TikTok and they're like, Gary told me to do it. And now Gary's on the other side. Like, I didn't tell you to do it. I was just using a metaphor, man. Hey guys, we want to take another quick break to thank another sponsor for today's episode, ExpressVPN. Going Mm. online without ExpressVPN is like leaving your kids with the nearest stranger while using the restroom. Exactly the same. It's exactly the same thing. Most of the time, it's probably fine. <laughs> yep. No, that's never fine, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but you never truly know who you're trusting. Why would you ever risk it? And that's why you <clears throat> need to be on ExpressVPN and using it, too. Not yeah. only on it, but using it. Every time you connect to an unencrypted network in a cafe, a hotel, an airport, basically any network that's not your own, your online data is not secured. Any hacker on the same network can gain access and steal your personal data, passwords, financial details, you name it. ExpressVPN creates a secure, encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so that hackers can't steal your data. Hackers can make some serious cash selling personal information on the dark web. But it's Express true. VPN is true. Yeah. I've been on the dark web. There's yeah. some messed up stuff on there. I was kind of offended though. I went to go sell my own measurements and information about me. <laughs> measurements? Yeah. No no one really bought. No one really bit on it. <laughs> hey guys, here are my dimensions yeah, in case like, you need to know. No, I put in Noel Miller's waist size, zero <laughs> bids. Bummer. Yeah. Um, but ExpressVPN has made it easier than ever to keep your information safe. Just fire up the app, click one button, and you're instantly protected. And ExpressVPN sorry, works on all your devices, like laptops, phones, and tablets, so you can stay secure on the go. Yeah, secure your online data today at expressvpn.com slash TMG and get three extra months free. For free. That, that's expressvpn.com slash TMG. expressvpn.com slash TMG. <laughs> metaphors are dangerous i'm a, right now and i'm a metaphor fucking machine so i'm in and and i'm a and i'm a like let's be let's put shit in perspective yeah. dude right like yeah. you know how much bad shit can happen and totally. you're upset about you didn't get the promotion yeah. like every day on this earth people get very upsetting news like really genuinely upsetting news and i'm like fuck man just be grateful for what you have and just the dumb shit that people cry about. Yeah. Yeah, no, get it. What were you going to say a second ago, Cody? Sorry, I cut Nothing. you off. Nothing. I was just going to say it, it is, it seems like it's more effective, especially in, in those mediums to use hyperboles and to speak hyperbolic like I that mean, where you're me, like, because it makes me, a great clip. Yeah. Cody, you know what? For me on some real shit, this is like what's fun back to like the friends we were talking about. The funniest shit is like all my friends were like, man, I wish the world knew that you've been doing this shit. Like I've always been ridiculous in my Mm. metaphors. Mm. Like I don't really have a different gear. I'm different contextually. If we were sitting down for an hour and you're like, hey, we want to really blow this business out. Yeah. And like, how do you think about what we, like, you'd be like, whoa, that's a different Gary than we had on the podcast. Cause I go into like operations mode. Right. And I'm like, you know, it's like a different, it's a, the context is different. Yeah. What? But 
in yeah. general, like talking f- differently has really been who I've been my whole life, mainly because I failed every class and I'm not well read. I had to almost make up my own language. Right. Got to. Gary, you know, I'm going to say the rate at which you can talk and the type of you know, metaphors and stuff you can put together, I think y- you could rap very well. I think. Well, bro, now you're talking about something that is the great devastation of my life of something that doesn't matter. I love hip hop rap so much. Yeah. I feel like I see what you're saying too. Yeah. Real rappers, like real guys and gals say it to me, but there's a devastating last piece. The <laughs> sheer lack of music ability I have in Dude, any shape. We're on the same page there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> me and you are on the same page. I somehow like managed in the to. Shower, I'm like, no, no, I fucking, this is going to be like, literally this happened six months ago. I'm like, you know what? I used to be super out of shape and not healthy. It doesn't come natural to me. I hate it more than life. But over the last eight years, I got a fucking babysitter trainer. I got educated of like, cal- like I got a little, and I, I worked it. I actually achieved something that doesn't come natural to me. For sure. So like nine months ago, I'm like, I'm going to do that with rap. I don't have a musical fucking bone in my body. And so like it, for like a month in the shower, I'm like literally trying oh, to spit bars. No, I've got the bars. I just have no musical cadence at all. Come on, man. Like, none. You're a powerful man. We have to get you in. Uh, Jay-Z would gladly sit down with you. I mean, we have to get someone to work this out. So you, but you, you've got the bars, though, you're saying. You have the lyrics. Yeah, I, no. I know how to, like, I definitely know how to say shit. Gary Bars cannot live and die in the shower, man. They have to see the, the light of day. We have to get this out there. You know, you've conquered a lot of things. If we could get, I do need to win. Yeah, you're right. If we get Polo G featuring Gary V, oh my God, that would be a hundred insane. G, when Polo, when Polo G was smart enough to sample Smooth Criminal, I literally, literally said to myself, "This guy's gonna be so uncomfortably famous." <laughs> Just the understanding of how humans work, the range. I was like, "Oh, this is like a different version of Drake." One that I really like. I fuck with Polo G Heavy. I do really like that song. The one with the Me too. Because everyone, listen, Alien Ant Farm had a fucking hit with it. It's fucking smooth criminal. That's it's a good best. ass song. I actually like that. I like the Alien Ant Farm version more than the Michael <laughs> oh. Jackson version. <laughs> yeah, the Alien Ant Farm version hit hard. <laughs> and that's just proof I have no musical talent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, okay. Well, we can sidebar this, but we definitely need to get... Uh, Polo G, Alien Ant Farm, you know, uh, and Gary V all on one track. I mean, that's just, you know, that's my musical goal for the year. Yeah. You know, I don't, that I don't, would I don't, literally be the greatest day of my life. Yeah. I don't have any strings to pull. So I'm going to rely on you <laughs> to pull them, but, you know, you can make it happen. Well, you answered a lot of our questions already because I feel like coming in, we weren't sure. We we're like, man, uh, does Gary hate us? What you know? <laughs> we really weren't sure what the context yeah, of yeah. this was because you had sent that DM. So I was like, maybe he God, really I'm hates so us. I, even, I, 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 <laughs> I mean, I didn't even really consider that you might have just been blasting it out to everyone. Well, I, I thought know, I was what, like, what, damn. You know what I do when I have a it, like a post that I'm excited about? I'll just kind of go into like my inbox and like send it to like ten or fifteen people and be like, damn. like it's kind of like a gut check of like people that I think get it. And see, oh. like, what they're, it's almost like a, I thought this was good. Did you think this was good? Kind of like vibe. So that, because we DM'd the, like a couple days earlier, right, right, you, were right. at the, you were in that fucking range. Yeah. Damn. Where, you have like, like a hundred million hours of video footage of you from all these different like yeah. talks and convent. Like, how long yeah. have you been filming yourself doing everything? Somewhere around. Somewhere around 20, what are we in 2022? I think in 17 or 18 or 16, like I was like, you know, you'll find this interesting of why I think this is so cool. Yeah. And you guys are going to live this life. You are literally, literally going to have a conversation in 41 years with one of your grandkids around this exact video right now. And that is like fucking wild. Yeah. 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 And so like, for me, it was like my great grandfather, my grandfather, both my grandfathers died before I got to meet them. Yeah. And my parents who I adore always like, we have such, they're only 20 years older than me. Like the old country in Russia, you had kids early. Like we're like friends, not just like they're my parents. Mm-hmm. And like, they give me so, they spit so much like emotional game to me of like, man, you do this just like my dad did. Like, you know, they both lost their dads young. 
Dang. And it fucking, I think, just weighed on me. And at some level, I th- you know, it kind of started with like, you know what? I have shit to say. I'm interested in this. I'm going to put this on wax, AK video. And like, it'll be cool. Like if God forbid something atrocious happens to me, or even if not, it'll be like fun to be like chilling. And like the, like the grandkid runs in and be like, yo, was Cody's hair that nice? I was like, yeah, it was really nice. <laughs> was you know, like, and so I think that humans right now underestimate what's happening because there isn't a generation for us to point to. <clears throat> yeah, It's really fucking rad that you guys have this and you're going to chop it up with people in the future. So I like putting it on, it's like just having photos, right? Like my family didn't have a lot of photos because in Russia, you didn't do that shit. And so like, I just lost all this family heritage. I kind of like that my life is filmed out. And I also like being right and wrong. I love the merit of the game. Like I love the game so much. Like it's fun to be like, oh fuck, I was right about, like I secretly like wonder like, man, if NFTs don't win, I'm gonna have unlimited film to make fun of myself. (laughs) So so I think it also in a weird way by filming puts me in a position of accountability of being sharp. And then finally, you know, being known, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. Being known leads to business opportunities, right? Like I, I want to have business opportunities. It's my game. And the more I put out good shit, the more I'm right the more that leads to people being like, fuck, this dude know what the fuck he's talking about. Maybe we should do business with him. And that, it, you know, that's my craft. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, we probably will chop it up with our kids about you because um, if an asteroid hits this earth, the only footage we're going to have of humans <laughs> is just going to be Gary. Like, we're going to lose everything else. We'll lose YouTube. We'll lose everything. But footage of Gary will definitely be around. <laughs> yeah, it'll I, be I, I got to admit, I do fuck with cockroaches. I think they're underrated. And so when I think that, you know, they always say, like, if a nuclear bomb comes, the cockroaches win. I'm like, I'm going to be a fucking cockroach. Like, you know, so I think maybe that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. This is going to be a probably a really boring question for everyone else, yeah, but for everyone listening right now, but my favorite podcast ever is How I Built This. And so yeah, when right. I listened to your episode, that was the first time that I really got that side of you where you were just kind of like, yeah, I like to be made fun of. And I and I got like the backstory with the wine and stuff like that. Yeah. And I, I suggest everyone go listen to that because it, it was like one of my favorite episodes. But Thank I want to know, is Guy Raz just like the absolute fucking man? Dude, he's such a strong, like, you know, it was funny. You and like, this is back to like the way I put out content. So, you know, the way I put out content, no question has baggage that comes along with it, which is in that format, it's incredibly difficult to show depth. Right. Right. And I'm incredibly Are you talking proud. about like with TikToks and like- Well, the, the, TikTok, like like the joke the joke stuff's on a planet by itself, but even like the stuff that isn't like funny or like the Menta Gary, like the funny analogies, like even just my business content in That's, 45 yeah. seconds, you can only do so much damage. Right, yeah, really, yeah. it's a moose boosh to try to get you to dig deeper and then go into the longer form. How I built this emails and they're like three hours. And I'm like, get the fuck out. I'm, I'm, like, I'm so like 15 minutes, seven minute meet. Like I go hard and fast. Hell I'm yeah. like three hours. And I, I kind of said no to myself and my team. I was like, eh, you know, it's, a, it's the, one of the best, but I don't know if I've got three hours for it, right? There's too much going on. And then I kind of slept on it. I was like, yeah, I just like Guy a lot. His energy's so awesome. It is such a great show. I was like, fuck it, let's do it. And in hindsight, it was a remarkably good thing because listen, it, no matter how built, much built you are to be able to deal with judgment and not, you don't give a fuck, every human cares. And you know, even if you're good at taking jokes or you're good at people misunderstanding, and I'm really good at it. I just really am. It's how I'm built. That's my mom's doing. That's my growing up in the gutter doing. There's a lot that got me there. I'd be lying if I didn't say I'm really glad I did that show because I am flabbergasted by how many people have come up to me, emailed me, DM me and said, you know what? That podcast put the final tease and like there was things that were missing that I heard in there that give me a different point of view. And that's like, listen, it's nice. Like, why wouldn't you want somebody to think fondly of you versus you suck? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Well, that's good to know. I, I that's that, that question was for me, you know, Shout out Although that, that is like one of the most popular podcasts of all time, but it's my favorite. I was fucking, I've been listening forever. Yeah. It's a great podcast. Hey guys, we want to take another quick break to thank another sponsor of today's episode. Seat geek. 
Uh, listen, live events are back. They are. Which means you can get $20 off tickets at SeatGeek with promo code TMG. If you don't know what SeatGeek is, uh, they're a ticketing app that makes buying tickets <clears throat> super simple. We've got the app on our phones. We'll show you that right now. Garth Brooks is playing in space. No, come on. Tell him what's happening in L.A. In L.A.? Okay, yeah, let me just set my location to L.A. It's automatically detected space. So it's Dirks Bentley. Yeah, there we go. Oh, no, that's in Montana. Uh, you could fly out to Montana. Los Angeles. The Rams. Oh, ah. yeah, the Rams game. Yeah, yeah. Well, regardless, man, whether it's concerts, basketball, football, festivals, or more, SeatGeek puts tickets from all over the web in one place to make <laughs> buying super simple. Are you excited uh, for the NFL playoffs by I'm the way very excited for the nfl playoffs well we should get tickets on SeatGeek. we should go rams yeah SeatGeek rates every ticket from zero to ten to make sure you are getting a good deal green means good red means bad every ticket on SeatGeek is backed by their buyer guarantee so you can shop for tickets with confidence you know my actually my favorite quarterback used to play for the rams oh yeah, yeah jared goff yeah nice yeah <laughs> Uh, if you're worried about pricing, he's, he's, a, he's a buddy of mine. Yeah, he's a buddy of Cody's. Yeah. They actually met at a charity softball <laughs> yeah, game. Did, yeah. Look, just did it for the kids. If you're did worried, it for the kids, you if, know. If you're worried about price, don't worry because we've got the hookup. Use the code TMG for twenty dollars off tickets at SeatGeek. That's twenty dollars off your first purchase with the promo code TMG. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. Um. <clears throat> This is like a hard pivot. Uh, Kyle, we didn't prepare the Sex in the City scene. We wanted to do a reading of a Sex in the City script with you because we thought it'd be funny, but I don't know if we have it, so we could just move on from that. <laughs> <laughs> we just want to let we, you know that was guys, on... Where are, you, where are you guys based? I forgot. Uh, well, we're in space. We're in space, yeah. I don't know where, but, but like real life. All right, well, oh, oh, we're both in LA. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. So like, I'll be in LA for Super Bowl. I'm pretty jam-packed, but I'm there a lot. Let me come in and let's act out the scene. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Can we do that? What's better than audio video? Let's yeah. fucking actually go there. Dude. I, yes. I cannot I'm wait. hundred percent. I cannot wait. So you're going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I'm going to the I Super Bowl. I heard there's a bunch of NFT shit happening with the Super Bowl. Wait, or no, could no, no. Be... Before we get into that, let's okay, talk okay. about the, the big ticket item. Gary, Which? how close are you to getting the, getting the Jets? <laughs> yeah. How close are you, dude? Be honest. Um... I'm in striking distance. Like I don't have the wealth. I don't have the wealth yet, but I'm, I'm really crafty. And I feel like I've done a lot of things well. I have two significant businesses in VaynerX and now VFriends. I feel that I'm young. I don't think the Johnson's family who own the Jets are transacting anytime soon. And really to be frank with you dudes, like, and I think I said on how I built this, I don't know if they used it. Like, I just love trying. Like if Karen Thompson buys the Jets in six weeks and everyone's shitting me online, like, fuck you, see, eat it. Like you'd be surprised of like how much I actually don't give a shit. Yeah. It's been well, so fun trying. Like the last 40 years, like I've been on this kick since third grade or fifth grade. I don't remember exactly, but like the game of like chasing something sure. and like trying to strategize and can I do it? Am I good enough? Will it happen? Will I get lucky in timing? Like all the shit that you think about when you've made up this fun goal has been really fucking fun. I think I'm going to pull it off dudes on some serious shit. I think I'm going to pull it off. And on some other serious shit, if I pull it off, I expect somebody to make a movie of my life. Cause that's some gangster shit. <laughs> well, we well, actually have some news. We actually have some news for you. Yeah, dude. We that just, is. we just bought the Jets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny. A couple of my friends made, you know, I grew up in the web two game and some of these characters made big businesses and made like real money. And it's like inevitable back to like your friends razzing you. Like every time a homie cashed out for a B, they would text me and be like, I'm buying the Jets. And like, so I've, uh, <laughs> Damn I, it. what a, what a text, man. What a life <laughs> you lead. Hey Seriously. brother, it's just, the, uh, it's the ultimate flex. Hey, just so my was, company. And I imagine I'm that was really in... wealthy and I'm going to slice your throat by <laughs> taking your dream from me. I imagine that was like in response to you saying congratulations to, Hey man, congrats on the sale. I saw the, totally. saw the tech crunch article. Totally. Thanks. Yeah. I just bought the That's, jets by the by way. way. Literally, literally, Literally saying, I just saw the TechCrunch article happen one of the times. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm, it's really fun to chase. Look, I got blessed. I grew up wanting to be an athlete because I love sports. sports. Sports taught me kind of America. Like that's when I became Americanized. You know, I was born yeah. in the Soviet Union. 
playing Nerf outside, watching with like, I moved to Edison, New Jersey. These kids were all playing Nerf ball, football. They were like, hey, who do you like? I was like, I barely spoke English. I'm not even sure what the fuck. They're like, you're a Jets fan. They kind of <laughs> took me, they took me in. And like, it really meant a lot to me, sports. Yeah. And in first, second, third, fourth grade, my hand-eye coordination was so on point that I was like a beast. I was good at tennis. I was good at baseball. I was good at everything. I could catch. I was all that. By fifth grade, I was like, something's happening here. Everyone's getting much stronger, much faster, much bigger. And like, <laughs> and so by sixth grade, I'm like, oh, I'm not doing anything that looks anything close to that. Damn. And so, and so then I kind of switched it to, I'm a businessman. I'm going to do this thing. So my whole life, it was almost like the booby prize. Then I got older and probably about 10 years ago when I started to be in a place in my life where I started becoming friends with athletes, I realized, oh shit. And it really hit me probably six, seven years ago. I was like, oh, these guys and girls, this was like their dream their whole life, their passion. They did it at the highest levels. And then your body tells you, you can't do this anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And they're 36, 33, 27, 41, and it's over. And they go through a very difficult transition, Mm -hmm. like depression, like really. And and so like somewhere about five, six years ago, I was like, oh, shit, I got lucky. The thing that I love and the thing that I'm good at, I could be doing at 80. Your body isn't the variable. And so I'm very grateful for that. That's a good point, man. Yeah. Everyone goes through that period or like one of those realizations where you're like oh fuck i'm not the best at this Mm -hmm. i used to think i was so for it to happen younger i feel like it's a lot better for me it was in college when i because i was like a cool guy in high school and then i went to college and i was like i'm a fucking loser (laughs) (laughs) you mean from like Like, your ability to hook up no just like socially like where people saw me in terms of how funny i was how cool i was like you know, I moved like, to a completely were you a top, different. Were you top tier in high school? Like, well, he was homeschooled, yeah, I mean, so. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom thought you were the coolest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, she like, always I, said I was the most handsome. I would go around seriously. You want best looking, <laughs> most likely to succeed. Yeah, and then I went to Victorian. Exactly, and then I went to college, and I was like, everyone here is so much more handsome than I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cody's yearbook was three pages. It was like, congratulations, <laughs> a picture of him, and then the end. No. His mom, dad, <laughs> and, and then the a family dog, photo. And the dog, and the dog yeah. <laughs> exactly. So that was pretty shocking for me. No, Going no. to college, you know? I, th- um, I, think, I think it happens along the way in all categories of everything. Mm-hmm. And, it, and then actually, back to the content, like so much of what I'm just trying to tell people is like, and what? And mm-hmm. fucking what? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're not the fucking fastest. You're not the best looking. You're not the best at school. You don't make the most money. And fucking what? Imagine your family dying. I believe in that shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I understand that it's incredible comedic fodder. Yeah. And and I love that. And like, it makes me genuinely smile. On the flip side, one thing I'm incredibly proud of is the shit that comes out of my mouth. I believe so fucking much you can't even imagine. No, I I trust that. I think... You definitely have like, it's conviction. Conviction, yeah, hundred yeah. percent, man. I don't think like I really, yeah. and I also know that I'm more interested in being historically correct than transacting now, and so it gives me this level of like confidence of like, okay, I know what my north star is. It's not to get a bag right now from like a brand deal or like like I can I'm good at that part. It's yeah. about like actually being right about this shit cuz it's like fun. Are you good at life? Yeah. Let mm-hmm. alone and so it does make me flow freely, but it also requires if you're going to live that life. So for you guys, right? In your towns when I watch it, if somebody's really going there and they don't have the humility and like ability to understand for example, <laughs> demented Gary V or whatever else you do, they're actually vulnerable because they actually aren't secure in their framework. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gary, I have a, a, a very like simple question for you. When you upload stuff to you to YouTube, do you you know how YouTube gives you that little ranking? Like this video is one out of ten or eight out of ten. Do you care about shit like that? Or are you just like, nah, I'm just doing what I want to do and I don't give a fuck? No, I just want to do like Mr. Beast is a, is a friend yeah. and he's like, man, you could be so much bigger. And I'm like, I get it. You're like thumbnail title, like cadence inside of it. 
And I'm just like, man, I just want to say the shit that I want to say. And if like, like, yes, I, listen, for my profession, I want to teach brands and I myself want to do it right. I do want to do it right. Mm-hmm. Like, why not have more people hear your shit mm-hmm. on YouTube? Like, if you asked me on Instagram, I went five years really thinking about how to do it, quote unquote, right, but not compromising what I say. Sure. On YouTube, I take a different approach. It's longer form, the majority of it. And I'm like, I need this place for people to get the complete picture. So if YouTube wants to give me a one, like, fuck you, YouTube, I'm putting this out. Yeah, yeah, okay. Listen, the, the restaurant. The NFT restaurant? Yeah, are, yeah. We, are we good to come through? <laughs> well, if we don't have an NFT, if we don't have the, the membership, can we just slide through the back door or something like that? I mean, if you put an, if you want to put on, if you want to punch in and work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can go through the back to the employee entrance. I got, I got, I got good news for you guys. When you guys come to New York in Q1 early next year, I've got a couple <clears throat> of seats that are my table thing. I, it would be a genuine pleasure. Oh, hell to yeah. Have dinner with you guys and chop it up and get to know each other better. And we will do it in Fly Fish Club because Chef Capon and Chef Khan, like, this is what's so great about getting older. Like, these are two chefs that I've watched in New York do their fucking thing for 20 years. So, like, the lack of anxiety I have that we are going to dominate the food program and that we are going to be super on point. So, it'd be really fun to, to do that with you guys. For I would sure. love, I honestly would love that. Yeah, I, it's the same. I would, I would love to. Are you guys into wine? Um, I'll drink it. Right, I'm, but you don't nerd on it. Nah. No. Nah. What about bourbon? Uh, not really. I know a little bit about gin. No shit. It's funny. I've been thinking a lot more about gin because gin hasn't popped insane yet. And so that's like the white space, you know? That's exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally took the words out of my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Verbatim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I yeah, yeah, listen, we should... I know, I know this is like my time, but I'm enjoying this so much and I'm sure there's like, like I know how these things go. There's probably some things we didn't get to. So I'm just going to hang for five more minutes if you allow me to, and I'll be late for my next meeting. For sure. Dude. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That'd, be, that'd um, be fucking perfect. I mean, dude. Okay. I, you're so good at giving advice. I wanted to put you in an unethical context. All right. If someone, okay. if someone is down bad and they needed to steal, what would you tell them to steal? Whatever was most stealable. Okay. <laughs> right. Like, I mean, like, like, duh. like, like if you work at tar- like if you work at my dad's wine store, like, and you're in stocking shelves, like, steal the expensive wine. Okay. Okay. Like, if you work at Vayner, like, oh, see which offices are open in the executives' room and take the most expensive. Sh- like, <laughs> listen, like, employees, are you hearing this <laughs> shit? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Listen, you asked me the question. I have to give you the answer. Like, what I don't is, know, like, what do you think the worst advice you've ever given? What is it, do you think? You know, I'll be, I'll be vulnerable here. I didn't understand. This is actually funny. As Gary V on stage, because I'm talking to masses, I think candor is a strength of mine. I like want to go to the punchline. Mm-hmm. As an executive, because I've been building business my whole life, I actually really struggled with candor. I didn't, I don't like confrontation. I, and I always thought that I could fucking figure it out. I knew that I didn't value the money enough. And I liked my people, my team, my home. Like I really, from day, like day one was like employees as family. Like I was really about that life. And so I'd always try to like figure it out. And so early in my career, when my best friend joined, I was like, look, if someone sucks, you don't tell them. You try to manage around it and build them up and get them there. Mm. And in hindsight, it was bad advice. Now, what I've learned is what ended up happening was I realized, man, there's been people that have worked for me that don't like me. And I was like, how could that be? Because I don't like, I know who I am. Like, I don't value the money enough. I love the people. This is something's broken. I was like, fuck, it's the candor. I would, I'd be like, Cody, you're great. Like Cody, great hair day. Cody, good shit. And then out of nowhere on Tuesday, I'd be like, yo, Cody, got five minutes. So Cody, listen, we're going to have to let you go. And he'd be like, what the fuck? And, and, and. 
And he was like, you said my hair was awesome on Friday. I'm like, yeah, but you know, like, and you know, as a kid in my you 20s, can still be, my You 30s, can still be unemployed and have great hair. So later, dude, so, you're. And, so, <laughs> and so, so I really struggled with candor. Mm. And somewhere around four or five years ago, I switched up my game because I had to have that moment where I was like, look, what can I be better at? What the fuck's not working? And, and I put this concept of kind candor into my head. I'm like, look, I can tell somebody they're really not good at their job, but I can unscare them by being aggressive about contextualizing it and communicating. And it's really helped me. So to answer your question, the worst advice I gave in my, I would have made videos about this back then and I would have been wrong. My evolution helped me get there is if someone's like not good, actually letting them know and trying to build them up from it is dramatically better than trying to work around it because you as the owner or the manager will get, will get resentment over the time. And then eventually you'll just have this kind of like, either you'll subconsciously force them out and they've sensed it and they don't like that. Or you'll drop that Tuesday morning bomb when Friday was awesome. And then you're really not doing the right thing. And that's something I've had to work on. Damn. It was deep. Yeah, it was deep. That was a great answer. I mean, in these la- in this last buzzer beater minute, I'm gonna try to throw you uh, throw another one out here. Um, you are obviously a connoisseur of NFTs. You know about a lot yes. of NFTs. Who's got the ugliest NFT art? Are you goading me into? <laughs> Yeah, I can hear the background. You got, I mean, the answer is me. No, I mean, oh, no, 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 that's not what we were no. doing. Oh, I, oh, no, that's not okay, what we were doing. No. Listen, I'm famously, you know, I thought I was doing a good thing because, you know, it had to be provenance and I was going to draw it and it came from my soul and I was going to doodle it. And I was like all proud of it. I was like, you know, this is important. If I'm going to build this Disney Pokemon Transformers like world from day one, the fact that it came from my heart and my brain and my soul and my fucking Sharpies, that's authentic. And I was like all proud as shit. It comes out, it crushes, but like everyone's like, you fucking asshole. These kindergarten drawings suck shit. My fucking three-year-old niece can, and I was like, and so like, there's a lot of people that think be friends is actually the answer. Damn. It does seem like, it does kind of seem like, like a commentary on the whole thing. Like it seems kind of ironic a little bit. Well, I'll I'll tell you, it's actually the reverse. It's ironic if you think it's all about the subjective art. Mm -hmm. It's incredibly not ironic if you understand what NFTs are, Uh. which is contractual utilities that can do so many other things, that they are the gateway to my conference. When I build my IP, when I build my Disney world and Mm -hmm. the original V friends is lifetime pass, people can be like, oh fuck. Like people don't understand where this world's going. They're underestimating it the way they underestimated YouTube when I was there day one in 06, the way they underestimated the internet, the way they underestimated Twitter, fucking TikTok. It's all the same shit, bro. People underestimate the new because they don't have enough curiosity, confidence, or patience to see it through. Damn. Bars. That's a bar right there, man. There you go. Put, put that I mean, on a beat, man. <laughs> fellas, listen to me. I see you. You guys have real fucking talent. I cheer oh, for you. Thank I you. wish you Thank you, man. Shit. Thank really you so much, it. Gary. Really appreciate, appreciate you for it. coming on, bro. And thank you Thanks, so much man. for doing Probably this. Sure. We really appreciate it. Of course. It. Take care, Take care Enjoy the next meeting, man. Bye. Real nice meeting you guys. <laughs> you too. See you in January. Oh, oh shit. Fuck. Damn. Well, that's going to line up real well with all our NFT jokes and the bonus. Yeah. Forgot we already fucking did the, the we already did the bonus and it's just an hour's worth of us of bagging us on crypto ripping land. on crypto and NFTs and wow that's gonna be a perfect transition. But, well, no, uh, it's fine. It's you know that that's our um, visual accountability. You know, yeah, people can run that back. We're we're just playing the same game as Gary. Exactly. Like once yeah, when we're at the restaurant actually, and we. And we take a picture and we're at the NFT restaurant. Mm-hmm. Someone's going to reply and be like, remember when you said this on Crypto Land? We're like, yeah. Yeah, we do remember that. Now we're eating fucking fish. <laughs> Thanks to an NFT. <laughs> so, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Thank you all for tuning in to this um, kindergarten hearing test. Um, we will, uh, if, you, if you're, obviously, if you're a Patreon, we'll see you in the, in the bonus. Um, we had a lot of fun on the bonus. Yeah. And uh, that we definitely recorded after this, after even though this, Cody yes, we just are, sorry, said we that. are we are sorry, tense. We are going to have a lot of fun in the bonus. Yeah, when we rip on crypto land and NFTs. Yeah, um, and, and when we talk about various other things. So, yeah, but yeah. honestly, Gary, great. That was fucking awesome. Yeah, thank you, Gary. That, thank you, man. Seriously. I mean, uh, he, I, again, I, I, like like I said in the beginning, I wasn't sure what the tone of this was going to be because when we set it up, 
then that we we joked about this before that kind of passive aggressive dm that i got but i guess we got the full story and yeah. uh he seems like he likes what we do so we, we appreciate that man. yeah thank you gary and we and he came through and he said picture swallowing a bag of nails dude I mean, that was just, so i mean you don't like I, we can't thank you enough for that if you're watching yeah, yeah what a legend what a legend for doing that yeah serious so uh thank you gary thank you uh uh gary's team for helping put that together as well um anyways guys see you in the bonus see you guys in the bonus oh by the way tune in again broken connor mega podcast mm -hmm. uh first episode will be out tomorrow yeah and that'll be thursday and uh make sure you subscribe on spotify give it a review on itunes that would really help us and tune in on youtube it'll be there too um and it feels good to be back Gang. so who's got those beans should I get those back? Yeah. Yeah, let's get Cody's beans the back. The can of beans. Can I get those?